let's use contrast in another way, uh, more of an environmental rocky way. Uh, in fact, if you caught, here's the ZBrush 2021.5 new features, you can watch the keynote here. So here's me and Paul and Joseph uh, talking about some of the new features. And I kind of cover this a little bit uh, in this, as well as if you want to see, you know, the making of this, you can go through here and you can see uh, kind of this in action. So you finally get that final result here, as well as on my YouTube channel. You know, you've got, you can watch that video there too as well. So let's recreate that really quickly. Let's go in here to load our skull island here. Let's go out of solo mode. So uh, this skull you might recognize. Again, on my YouTube uh, playlist section here, there's a mechanical skull, uh, high res and substance and rendering. And then on my R station page, mechanical skull, here's all the series. So if you wanna see the making of this mechanical skull from this kind of organic skull, there you go. But essentially this is a skull I had laying around. And then I just kind of put a blob dynamesh around this as well. So of course you can go in here with your clay buildup brush, which we talked about in earlier videos in this series even, uh, go through here and kind of you know, start blocking out maybe some rocks. We have a square alpha in here, so we're kind of getting kind of a square look. But uh, for rock building, uh, a couple of brushes I like to use. I'm gonna hit the comma key, go in here to brush, trim, and there's a trim hole, so double click that one, and then hit the comma key, trim smooth border. And for both of those, I'm gonna go in here to alpha, turn on that uh, alpha 28 square alpha, and if I hit B, it put those new brushes we just loaded right here at the bottom. So we'll go back to trim hole, put in a square alpha for that one as well. Now we're off the races. And in fact, because we just use these underneath the brush options here, there's our most recently used brushes. So again, if you have this little double clicked divider here open and you got your brush menu over here, very quickly you can just grab those two brushes. So we're gonna be using trim hole and trim smooth border. So trim smooth border with a square alpha, if we hold down alt and let go of alt, it's gonna give us some nice craggy surfaces. I'm using craggy a lot in this <laughs> these videos. I don't know why. We got craggy alphas for skin. We got craggy uh, surfaces for rocks. This is the uh, year of the craggy uh, release here. But you can just, again just use the clay buildup brush to go through here and kind of just knock in some very uh, cool rock shapes. And in fact, you can switch this over to like a spray stroke if you want to, and you can just very quickly just start breaking up the surface. And then switch this back over here to like a dot stroke. And then now again, just kind of go through here and let go of alt, uh, tap alt, and then go through here and just kind of crag these surfaces up. Uh, again, this is geometry dynamesh. So just control drag and that'll re-dynamesh this result. Now I can kind of build up like striated cliff sides. I can go through here and hold down alt with trim smooth border. And as long as the normals allow me, it'll It'll kind of pull out straight, but I can't guarantee that. It's gonna find a normal and just kind of pull out from that normal. If I want to control it with my camera, I can go back here to trim smooth hole, or I'm sorry, trim hole. Again, we have that square alpha. So now this is gonna be camera based. So if I hold down shift and snap to the front here, hold down alt, I can start pulling straight out from that pre-existing geometry. Again, because we're using trim hole, it's going straight towards us. Or if we don't hold down alt, it'll push straight back in away from us. So we can very quickly use this to kind of you know, go through here and go to the top and you can, uh, and again, if your, your geometry is getting really, really stressed, uh, just feel free to control drag and that's gonna re-dynamesh, redistribute that geometry, give us a new geo. So we can go through here very quickly and start building up like cliff faces uh, from your um, vantage point here, control drag, and then you can go to the side and you can build up flat cliff faces this way. And again, the longer you brush holding down alt, the more it's gonna pull towards you control drag, and then if you just let go, it'll also push back or again, hold down alt and pull towards you. So there we go, we got some cliff faces here. We're gonna go back into our trim smooth border, uh, go through here and just kind of, again, craggy up these surfaces really quickly. Control drag to re-dynamesh, maybe shift to smooth a little bit, and then again, hold down alt, let go of alt. And again, we're just gonna go through here. There you go, we got some rock surfaces. Now I want to do the exact same thing uh, on this mesh here. So I'm going to alt tap here. And again, we're just going to use trim smooth border. Now you need to be a little bit careful when you do this. So if you go through here, and again, this is just a dynamesh mesh. And you go through here and you hold down alt and you pull through. If you go to the other side, you're going to see, oh, this is a very, it turns it in, it sucks this geometry all the way through. And if you were to dynamesh this, you're going to get this kind of nasty hole geometry. So to avoid that, what I'm going to do is go over here to brush, auto masking, back face masking. And that way, as I hold down Alt and pull through, it's gonna leave any 
any polygons it doesn't see, it's gonna leave them alone. And because they're on the back side, it's not gonna to touch them. So you can go through here, let go of Alt, hold down Alt. And you can just very quickly go through here. And again, we're just adding uh, some sharp features uh, to this rock, just to kind of make it look like, you know, maybe originally it was uh, carved and then uh, over time it just became just a rocky surface or maybe it's just a natural formation that just happens to look like a giant uh, ape skull on, a, on the side of a cliff. I don't know. I haven't really thought of the lore just yet, but you can see how very quickly you can get a very nice rocky uh, flavor to this. And you know, since we were using thick skin earlier, you can go in here to thick skin, turn this on. And if you want to, you can go back in here, BT thick skin clay and kind of start claying this around a little bit. Maybe add a square alpha to this and kind of just go through here and just, again, just add some of that nice rock flavor in here. Um, can work really, really well. Now we're in the contrast section. So what, what does all this have to do with contrast? Well, let's take a look at this. So uh, let's go ahead and turn off thick skin. We're gonna go down here to deformation. And if I run this contrast now, all of that contrast detail is gonna follow through with it. And in fact, as you guys might find this interesting for clay stuff or for rock stuff, you can go in here to clay polish. And in fact, we can go, let's undo that. Let's do a uh, sharp and resharp, crank those values up. And we do a clay polish now and control drag. You're gonna see it'll give you a nice rocky surface and it kind of makes these planar and then makes these little edges sharp. I'm gonna do the exact same thing while I'm gonna use a slightly different technique. And again, we're gonna involve contrast. The only problem is, uh, I have a lot of micro detail in these flat surfaces. So if I go in here to contrast and crank that up, it's gonna take that micro detail and really kind of over crank it so it gets very noisy. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reduce the geometry in the flat areas and simplify it, but keep the geometry in the big uh, harsh angle changes in my geometry here uh, where I focus my contrast. And in fact, to kind of uh, push that idea even further because I don't have a whole lot of cracks in here. Let's let's do this. I'm going to go switch back to my clay build up brush. And if I just use this right now, it's just going to use it's, it's going to clay build up and I'm going to lose all my detail because that's how the brushes work. It's just going to clay build up in brushes. But we know uh, since we've already watched these videos, if I go here to thick skin and turn that on and then dial this in to maybe say nine or 10, as I use clay build up, it's going to build up and then it's going to push that underlying detail forward and then hold down alt, it'll push it backwards. So you can kind of use this to get a very cool like rock striation look. You've already done the work of putting in the detail and now you just want to move that detail around in a way that makes this you know rock face look striated. So very quickly you can see again just letting go of alt and then holding down alt. You can kind of just again push that detail around and you get a very kind of cliffy rock striated face. But again, if we go down here to contrast, and that's deformation contrast, that's gonna take all that micro detail and just noise it up. So let's go over here to our Z plugin. I'm gonna take this white dot and drag it over here to that docking side. We're gonna go in here to decimation master and hit pre-process current. And you only have to do this once per object. So once you've pre-processed it, as long as you don't change the geometry, you only have to do that once. Now I can drop this down. So I'm gonna change this, change this to a polyframe here. Hit control W to make this all one poly group. And I'm gonna go in here to my materials and we're gonna change this to skin shader four so you can see it a little bit better. So now, now that I've pre-processed it, if I take this to K polys and I type in five and then enter and then hit decimate current, that's gonna drop that down to 5,000 polygons. That's a little bit too low. So if I want to change that, I can go over here. I can say maybe 150, enter. That's 150,000, decimate. Well, that's a little bit too high. Again, I want to simplify these broad surfaces. And when it's evaluating these measures, anything that has a very abrupt angle change, it's going to build more geometry in there because it wants to keep that detail. Anything that doesn't have an abrupt angle change, it's going to go ahead and just reduce the geometry in that area. So let's drop this down to maybe say like 35 or 40, hit decimate current, and there we go. Again, these open areas have less geometry and the sharp angle changes have a little bit more packed geo. So if I turn off polyframe, we'll go back in here and choose our matcap gray. Now when I go in here and do our contrast, you're gonna see it's gonna give me more of a rocky, craggy look. It's gonna emphasize those cracks and not carry that micro detail with it because that micro detail doesn't exist anymore. It's been obliterated by Decimation Master. So I can go through here and I can make this even look even more stony and we still have if I go in here under geometry, dynamesh, we still have dynamesh turned on. So if I control drag, that's gonna re-dynamesh it. So all this simple geometry is gonna be blanketed with nice even dynamesh quads. And now we can continue detailing this up with our nice 
flat, craggy surfaces. And again, you can use the skin thickness to your advantage. So turn on the skin thickness, maybe kind of cap it a little bit. Clay build up, go in here and change out this alpha. Now you can go through here again, hold down alt, let go of alt, hold down alt, and go through here, add all the micro detail you want, go back in here. You can even try back on our brushes here. Here's trim smooth border uh, with thick skin turned on. Maybe we want to give ourselves a little bit more wiggle room in here. So you can even kind of limit the influence of our trim smooth border now using skin thickness, uh, which may be useful for you. 